on the screen quranic stories unfold on the screen quranic stories unfold wisdom and lessons in each tale told wisdom and lessons in each tale told alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursalin amma ba'd فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Welcome back to our series We were talking about Yusuf alayhi salam Just yesterday we started his story Where his father had this compassion This affection towards Yusuf alayhi salam his other brothers became slightly jealous so they made this plan that we will throw him into a well when they threw him into a well they left him they went back to the father with his shirt with false blood on it and he was the blood of a, um, a grazer and a sheep or a goat when they went back to the father they said oh father we went out um, and we were racing one another and whilst we were racing we left Yusuf alayhi salam by our uh, our goods or our, our animals and the sustenance that they took with them um, and he says that when we came back a wolf had eaten him this is what the story the alibi that they gave to their father they said that oh father you're not going to believe us even though we are truthful the father he already knew he said that I fear that if you take him, a wolf's gonna eat him whilst you are uh, occupied. So the father already seen it coming. And this is exactly what, what happened. Um, they came back with this alibi that a wolf had came and ate him. So thereafter the brothers said, Father, look, this is his shirt. The father takes the shirt and he places it. He, he smells the and he began to cry. He could, he could smell the scent of his child. Uh, he began to cry. He says, it's, this is ajeeb, this is mysterious. This is mysterious. He says, a wolf has ate him. Yes, there's blood on this kameez, but he doesn't have one tear on this kameez. One tear at all. The rest of the kameez is perfect. He says, your story is very mysterious. He says, rather you have came up with a story yourselves. You've came up with a fabricated story. فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيل Patience is beautiful. Now that is amazing. Patience is beautiful. Because Yaqub Islam, if he was with us in the first episode, he, his son had a dream, Yusuf Islam had a dream where he sees his brothers, where he sees the sun, stars and the moon. Uh, doing sajda towards Yusuf alayhi salam and he said to his, him don't tell your brothers Yaqub alayhi salam knew the essence of this dream and in here when the incident took place he says patience is beautiful uh, and maybe this was indicating towards I be patient now Allah will show me the fruits of this patience in the future subhanallah uh, so this was the father after that became very sad he was grieving the loss of his son, he doesn't know what these children may have done to his other son. Um, and therefore the story continues. And what happened was the, the caravan arrived from, the, they came from Madian and they were heading into Misr. And on the way they stopped by this well. And as they lowered down their bucket to take uh, water from this well, um, a child came up on it as well. So they found it amazing. Why is there a child on this bucket? So they took the child. The caravan continued into Misr. As they're going to Misr, they put the child onto the market. Yusuf Islam was then being sold in the slave market. Now, this was Misr, this was Egypt. This was a very uh, affluent, a very prosperous, a successful country. It was uh, one of the most developed countries in the Middle East at that time and so as he's being Yusuf al Islam I'm narrowing down the story as he's being sold in the market many people came and bidded on him 
one person threw in a bid of his weight in silk. Whatever Yusuf al Islam weighs, I will pay that much in silk. Because they seen this child and he was beautiful. And they knew something that, that, that this child is, is, is prosperous. He's going to bring us prosperity. Um, they see so one individual bidded that I trade him entirety in the weight of silver. And another individual said, I will pay gold in his weight. Um, uh, Aziz a Misr seen this and took the opportunity and he says that I will pay gold, silver, silk and many other things in weight for this man, this individual. And he won the bid. Aziz a Misr took him back home to the palace. Now why did Aziz a Misr pay so much? So Aziz a Misr, he takes him back home and he says to his wife Zuleika and says, this is a child, I've just purchased him from the market. You're going to look after this child and you're going to give him the best of hospitalities. And this child will bring us prosperity in our finances, in our economy, in our work um, into this country. I could see the traces of goodness and virtue on his face. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, the one who purchased him from Misr said to his wife, honor him, show your hospitality to him, give him good place to reside in. It is hoped that he will bring us benefit or we'll take him up and adopt him as a child. Zuleikha was the most beautiful or one of the most beautiful women in Egypt. Her beauty was famous. and But when she seen the beauty of Yusuf Islam, who is still uh, a young child at this point, he's still young uh, in comparison to Zuleikha. So the verse of the Quran says that the one whom Yusuf Islam was in the house of Zuleikha enticed him against his nafs against his choice and he, she tried to, she tempted him to commit an act which he did not uh, want to commit and she had the doors and the windows closed the doors and the windows of the palaces were sealed and she said uh, I'm speaking to you, I am, uh, this is for you uh, this is no one else, this is specifically for you, this, this, this command in that sense it's literally the opportunity a weak man would fall into, would succumb to. However, Yusuf Islam, he says, Innahu Rabbi Ahsana Mathwaya. He says, The one who has brought me here, nurtured me, give me the best accommodations and hospitality. Yani Aziz Misr, that individual who has done everything for me up until now. Uh, I would never go against him by insulting him, by doing something against his wife. So this was the response of Yusuf al-Islam to the most attractive woman in uh, Misr. And that in itself has too many lessons to be taught. Nowadays, uh, young generation, they succumb to their desires, they fall in prey of their desires, um, not only damaging their own life, uh, but damaging the life of another individual uh, and possibly even another generation after that. Damaging their family respect, society respect. Uh, it ruins, it ruins houses, these falling into such traps which shaitan puts you in. Um, and having this taqwa, having this God-fearing approach where you turn around and you are able to control yourself, this is uh, the uh, this is a matter of virtue. One for one to be able to do that would be classed as a very very. Um, yani even the three people uh, only that will be in the shade of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's throne on the day of judgment, and one of those is that youngster who has been given the invitation of zina, invitation of, of fornication. And he declines, he rejects that. He will be, he is one out of three in that specific narration, subhanAllah. So, yani, 
that person who has this control, he is under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne. This is, this is virtue. This is virtue. Now, Zulaikha, she felt very embarrassed that she has enticed someone, closed the doors, gave herself up, and he's rejected. And she's a proud woman, but this occurred to her. Now, in that situation, Yusuf Islam is enticed by Zulaikha. Zulaikha has trapped him, doors are closed, windows are closed, it's secret. Yusuf Islam said, I would never do such a thing. He sees an opportunity to escape and he runs towards the door. Now, as he's running, Zulaikha, she grabs onto the back of his shirt in order to grab him, hold him, so he doesn't leave. If he leaves and the story leaks, this is a problem. And as he's leaving, she grabs onto the back of his shirt. Uh, but Yusuf Islam manages to escape. He escapes. As he leaves the door, uh, he is confronted by Aziz Misr, the husband. He's in front. And Zuleikha turns up as well. Zuleikha turns around so that she is free from any charge or she is you know uh, innocent she proves her innocence by saying that uh, how do you punish someone who has tried to wrong you whilst you have given them hospitality uh, by laying their hands on your possessions this is her remark this is her comment that I, basically she gave an indication to us he's a message that this individual has tried to assault me ma'adullah um, and, and the Quran says and they both ran towards the door, and the woman tore his shirt from behind, and they both found her husband at the door. She said, What is the punishment of the one who sought evil with your wife? But this, that, he should be imprisoned or subjected to painful torture. This was her comment that she's made in the Quran describes. So now they wanted to identify what has happened. They wanted to investigate. And at this point, Yusuf Islam looks guilty because he is the man, and it's normally men that would abuse or assault the weaker. But Yusuf Islam said, okay, if you want to investigate, then there is a child that's related to you in this house. Uh, approach that child and he'll tell you who is the truthful. And Aziz Misa said, there is a child of four months. How is he supposed to speak? And uh, he says that Allah will give him the uh, ability to speak. SubhanAllah. And... Uh, so Yusuf al-Islam, he straight away made a statement and said, Said Yusuf, it was she who tried to lure me that I should not protect myself and a witness, i.e., the child from her own household testified, if his shirt is torn from the front, the woman is therefore truthful and he has said wrong. And if his shirt is torn from behind, the woman is therefore a liar and he is truthful. 
When the governor saw his shirt torn from behind, he said, Indeed, this is a deception of you women. Undoubtedly, your deception is great. O Yusuf, do not think of it, and O women, seek forgiveness for your sin. Indeed, you are of the culprits. This is clear. Yusuf Islam and Zulaikha, there was an incident. The Quran is clearly telling us because it's the a situation between a prophet, a very sensitive. You say one wrong thing, you could fall out of the folds of Islam. So the Quran is kind of indicating you that, O oh, Yusuf, stay out of it. Just, just, just let it go. Don't talk about this again. And O oh, woman, you need to repent from uh, your mistakes. Subhanallah. Now. Women have a certain attribute, they like to gossip a lot uh, and this news spread into the city and the affluent woman of Misr, the, you know, the, from the noble tribes and uh, families, they began to talk against the wife of Aziz Misr and said that she was succumbed, she fell in love with this man who was a slave, who was a boy and she's fallen in. So they started to talk bad about Zuleikha and Zuleikha got fed up with this and what she done she called, she, she, she planned a feast and invited 40 of the most um, affluent women of Misr, the most prettiest women of Misr, uh, those same women who were talking against uh, Zuleikha and she invited them and laid down the Dastar Khan, the dining mat and planned this massive feast with foods and different different types of uh, sustenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on the day when they were all gathered uh, her plan was that okay these women uh, don't understand the reality of how beautiful Yusuf al-Islam is so uh, she, she planned this feast and she gave them different foods and she gave them all sharp knives so they could cook the meat with and the different different types of foods. Um, she basically dressed up Yusuf and made him wear his good clothes. They called on to this feast and she dressed up Yusuf Islam. Yusuf Islam initially said, no, we're not go I'm not going to do this. We can't do this. But she became very uh, firm in her word. Yusuf Islam walks in to the presence of these Egyptian women, the most dominant, affluent, prettiest women of Egypt and whilst they were cutting the meat in the beauty of this man who was, uh, you know, his radiance of Nur of Nubuwa was coming off his face, this person who's the son of a, who's a prophet, son of a prophet, so who's the son of a prophet, who's the son of Khalilullah, yani this ancestry of prophethood this individual has walked in the room is so beautiful that they ended up chopping off their own fingers unknowingly the women then realized what Zuleikha was faced with and this ended their matters the story now continues into the final portion inshallah come we will inshallah continue that uh, in the next episode Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give us tawfiq. Amin bi jahin nabil amin. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the screen, Quranic stories unfold. On the screen, Quranic stories unfold. Wisdom and lessons in each tale told. Wisdom and lessons in each tale told.